Okay, so I made a smaller travel box and I want to show you that. Now first, here's the box I'm using right now, okay? It's pretty long, it's uh, 54 inches long, all right? So it might be difficult to get in a cab. I usually just walk with it. Uh, we've got a half a dozen planes in there right now and it's very light, all right? So I wanted to make a box that was a little shorter uh, so I could get it into the subway and things like that. Now here's all the other stuff uh, that I bring to the field. Now if you watch my, um, let's see, half motor, you know, winding outside with the half tube video, You'll see how I bring everything to the field, okay? And it's a lot of stuff. So here I have a bag of rubber. There's the helmet I use with the GoPro, you know, so I can make the film. Uh, the reason I bring two transmitters is, now it's, it's, it's pretty nice. The orange and even the lemon receivers, I have about a half a dozen I can all bind to the same transmitter. But some of the newer oranges I got, you can't do that. If you bind it, you'll have to rebind the other ones, okay? So that's why with the two, it covers every single plane I have. But for travel, obviously I'll just take the four or five receivers, I can all uh, bind to one transmitter and just bring one transmitter, all right? Now here's also my uh, flight box, okay? And so here I have, uh, you know, the half tubes and the winder and uh, all my tools. I've kind of separated it now into everything I need for the P30s and old timers over here. And then there are some additional tools and wrenches I need for the wakes and coops. So I kind of separated those out, all right? So, you know, I do live on a fourth floor walk up. So right now when I go flying, I have to bring all this stuff down. It takes me two trips and then go down to the basement and pick up a cart that I use to wheel it. That's another 15 pounds. And then once I'm all loaded up, it's easy to get to the field. I just wheel it all and carrying the box is very light. All right. But I've been thinking of going to some other parks, maybe uh, Van Cortland is what I'm thinking of and maybe Central Park. And then it'd be nice to get it all down to just, you know, a lot more compact. So I did that. I think I got it down to the point where I could just do one box or a box and a handbag. And so I want to show you, this is what I'm calling my travel box. And I made it in the same way I've detailed my other box video. Now, the only difference here is two things. One is I made the handle a lot stronger than I usually do. So it's 330 second wire. I put some PVC. I put another tube inside the PVC so that it doesn't wiggle around too much. All right, even though that's fine. So it's a little bigger because this is going to be heavier. And also what I did with the 330 second, I went on, I usually just do it on the surface, but here I went on the inside down like that and down there. And let's see, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, but, uh, and it actually comes down here and then I glued cardboard to reinforce it on the inside. So in other words, there's no way this handle is coming off, coming loose without the whole box getting destroyed. All right. Of course, I only po also polyurethaned it. And with the dividers, in this case, I custom made it so that I can get four old timers in here. That's why I went for the deeper box, 10 inches. So I can even get the sky gull in here so I can get four old timers and two P30s in here. I checked. And then the only new thing is, well, here I put, so here's my winding stooge because uh, I believe Van Cortland has grass. I haven't flown on grass in years. So, uh, you know, I, I might need the stooge there to, to wind the half tubes. All right, so that's not a problem. Here's the spike, it just goes in there. And believe it or not, this compartment will actually hold everything, a transmitter, my winder, a couple of tool things. Even though when I loaded it all up, it was kind of heavy. So I think what I'm gonna do is just load the planes and then I'll put some tools in here and the rubber probably, for example, okay? Then uh, I just got a handbag here. And so in here, I think I'll put the uh, transmitter and the winder and maybe a little bit of the heavy tools, okay? So I think this is really nice. I mean, now uh, it should be easy to run out and fly. I can just, uh, you know, grab the handbag and get the box. It's only one trip. I don't have to carry anything else. So it should make it a lot easier to get out and travel a little bit, all right? I'll show you loaded up, uh, you know, and hopefully in the next few weeks I can get up to Van Cortland. So I'll show you the box loaded, ready to go. Okay, so I said in the last segment that I'd show you the box fully packed. All right, unfortunately it's over a year later because I never got to Van Cortland and then the pandemic hit, so that's it. I haven't been flying for quite a while. But what I'm thinking now is instead of lugging all that stuff to my, you know, I showed you in the first segment all the, all the things I bring to my local field, I thought, let me try this in my local field first, uh, which would be a good dry run, because if I forgot something this way, I'll see, you know, rather than take the subway all the way up to Van Cortland and then find out I forgot something.
all right? So I'll go through and I'll show you what we got here, okay? So this is a stooge. It's actually the Alexandrikov stooge. It's got a spike. That's what's in the end there. You spike it into the ground. I'll show you the top later. The only reason I'm bringing that is because if I go to Van Cortland, uh, I'm not sure they have a fence. I usually wind on the fence. So this way I can, you know, do it in the grass if I have to, okay? Uh, then I got a little puller stick, which is here. And you need that because if the motor breaks inside the plane, you got to be able to get it out. That's what you need that for. Then I have my half tubes I can wind out of the plane. This is the one I made for my P30. I also use it in all my old timers as well. I have a separate one for the Voyager. So that also goes right in here. None of this can come out when the lid's closed. Okay. Then I bring all the props. There you go. So, uh, and on the front ends and spare props in case I break them. And the wheels. I got the Lanzo in there and the, you know, the KKAs and so on. Okay. So I usually put that in a plastic bag like this. And then I usually just slip that right in here. It goes in there real nice. Now I want to keep this light, so I'm not going to put many tools, but I'm going to put my winder in there. And this is my F1G winder. All right, really nice winder, great feel. I shouldn't even tell you this, but I don't even use the torque meter anymore. I think my sense of feel is just much more accurate than any torque meter. Believe me, wind 100 motors till they break and you'll, you'll get a pretty good feel of what, it's going to, what it feels like when it breaks. So, but it does have a torque meter, okay? All right, so that goes in there too. And let me show you here, let's see, what do I have? Uh, I have the KKA, so I only got to fly that on two sessions, so I wanna get, get that out, maybe get some video. I brought the Lanzo, it's been years, I haven't flown it, and I love that plane, so I thought, let me bring that. Here's the Sky Voyager, okay, so we're gonna bring that out, I didn't get any video yet. And then here's the, uh, my P30, okay? Now, one thing I should say is, when you have this pull-pull like this, you can't have anything on top of it. Otherwise, it's going to loosen the threads, all right? Uh, they're actually Kevlar threads, but they'll still get loose, okay? So you can see this is resting on, on here. It's not touching that. That's the one thing I like about using the wire, like in the KKAs and in the Lanzo, because that's indestructible. You can do anything you want with that. Then I usually throw some bubble wrap on top of it, like over there and over here. Here's all the wings. You can see they all fit in there. And I... I mentioned before I like to use either a paper towel or a little bubble wrap because, you know, you could snag it on the cardboard that happened once and tear it. Okay, so that's all packed up and ready to go. And believe me, everything's sturdy. Nothing's going to wobble around. It lifts up this way, so that's on the bottom. And it's nice and light, so we're ready to go on that. Now, the next part was figuring out, and this was actually a bit of a challenge. I had to figure out what's everything I need in order to fly in the field, okay? So I had to spend a little time thinking about this. But anyway, here we go. I got my DX5 Spectrum Transmitter. That just goes right in there, not a problem, okay. Then I usually throw in, I have some rubber, you know, you always need a lot of rubber bands for planes. I throw that in there, it's nice padding and things like that. All right, then I have the top of the stooge. Whoop, this bag is sitting funny, there we go. I got the top of the stooge, you see? And uh, this goes on and slips in. Then I have, you need spikes to anchor the stooge, so here you go, I have some nice lightweight spikes, all right, and then this helps to anchor the stooge. If I have to use it, I'm going to put those in this front compartment here. A little rubber lube, even though I do all the lubing at home, but it doesn't hurt to have some with you on the field, okay? This is a little front end, I mean a half tube I made for the Voyager, you can see it's very small, that goes in there too. Then I have a pencil box. Now these are really all my tools of everything I need to fly. That's what I had to think about for a while. All right, so let me just show you quick. So um, here we have, uh, I don't know, I have to open it up, okay. There's all the batteries. So I usually use a 70 milliamp. I have a couple 30s in there. So I usually charge all these up, they're ready to go. This is just other little things I need for the front end and all of that kind of stuff, okay. It's good to have some gelled CA there, all right. This is how I do the wires. I put this on it so you don't lose it in the grass or on the AstroTurf. I have various shims and things like that. This is what I need to adjust the gizmo, the thrust, that's important. So that's in there. And some other wires, tools, and everything else I could think of. So that's one. You can just throw that right in. And then this one also has, um, this is what I use to check the voltage on the batteries, that's important. Got to make sure you have a nice, you know, it's not too undercharged. 
And toothpick, front ends, extra the bearings, things for the gizmo, you name it, it's in there. So you can throw that right in. Now finally, I, I put in all the rubber. All right, and here you go. I usually put it together in bags like this because I usually make six motors per plane so I can get at least six flights. You see, since I wind to the breaking point, usually you only get one flight with a motor and that's it. Okay, so let me just show you. So, and I like the label and this is for the KKAs. I put what they are. It's a 12 strand by 24. I like to put what I think is about the max winds I can get on at 850. So I just know when I'm at the field. And I, I leave the front ends on because that helps. You can see it's braided and that keeps the braiding in. Sometimes I put the rear hooks on, but not always. You, you can put those on in the field. It's pretty easy. And as you can see, it's all braided and lubed. So it's ready to go. I just pull the motors out and we're ready to go. And that actually acts like padding as well. Okay, so you just throw that in. I'll do it a little neater when I actually pack. Now, let me show you a couple other things I have. So this is how I wind on the front end. I'm sorry, on the fence. Okay, so I hook this on and then you can slip the wire and the rear hook in here. That's all you need, something like this. And this works great. All right, so I just put that there. Now this is my, uh, you know, some protective eyewear. And I should mention when you're winding a rubber motor, make sure that you always have on protective eye gear. Okay, if that motor breaks, boy, you can get hurt. In fact, I had one once with a nut, hit, uh, the knot hit me right in the knuckles here. And I was jumping up and down in pain. For a couple minutes i actually have a blast protector for my wakefield winder for this reason i mean that was an important lesson to learn so make sure you're always wearing protective eye gear when you're wind rubber motors okay now i also have in here the cameras because i want to make video that's part of the goal uh over here i have it's kind of in the bottom i have you know us old guys need our reading glasses and also i have some sunglasses okay and uh there you go I, of course, I use pilot sunglasses in all the videos. I feel like that's appropriate. And the other thing is you got to have, make sure that you're always wearing your sunglasses when you fly. You need the UV protection. So in all my videos, I always have on sunglasses. Always. That's very, very important. Okay. So then you just kind of, you know, this flips over and it has a nice shoulder strap. That's why I'm trying to keep the weight down. It's not too bad. All right. So I can just flick this over my shoulder. Now here's the helmet that I use to record with right here okay it's got a little GoPro thing here you put the camera on here I'm just gonna rubber band that and hang it off the side of the bag basically all right so there you go so this is pretty much everything that I need to go I'm actually gonna try to get out this week all right what's nice about this is now I can get out spur of the moment I mean it looks nice out I just grab the box grab the bag and that's it one trip I'm ready to go so I'm really looking forward to this Okay, so I'll see you in the field.